Hey, hey, everybody, it's Eddie from Tokyo. This is your cryptocurrency update from Japan. And I woke up this morning to three things that happened while I was asleep, one of which is something that developed even further throughout the day. Those are some new documents that have come to light with the SEC versus Ripple case. It's really getting, wow, it's getting so interesting. Um, but the one, uh, the, the one, the market is really, Quite amazing because BTC hit a high while I was asleep of $58,051, according to coin market cap. This is, well, almost just a hair within the $58,330 high it hit on February 22nd. And I was also thrilled to see a few more gains like VeChain. Wow, my gosh. And Zillica. Zilliqa is really on the move. This is a Singapore-based project that's positioned as a blockchain platform focused on a build-out in Southeast Asia and India. And with their announcement that Zilliqa Capital officially has invested in the DeFi solutions across the ASEAN region is giving them quite a bit of momentum. And I think one of the most well-known partners that they have is Unstoppable Domains. Many of the XRP uh, holders are following YouTubers that are affiliate partners. So I'm I'm pretty sure that um, this is a company that you are familiar with. I have had four domains from them, both .zill and .crypto since 2019. And um, yeah, I was even given a 25 percent affiliate share link, but I've never used it. I keep asking Unstoppable Domains if I can just turn that into a discount for the community, but they keep telling me no. <laughs> but I'm going to keep asking. So Zill up 3,403% on the year. 64% up this week, 31% up in the last 24 hours. So yeah, I was very surprised to see that. I'm really happy I had the patience. You know, patience, if you're new in this space, patience is a huge part of being successful in a holder of cryptocurrency. So on the broader view, I also read an article this morning about the market dominance of Bitcoin is just not the same meaning uh, that it had maybe two years ago, three years ago, four years ago. We used to always pay attention to what the Bitcoin dominance was, and it's been hovering around 60% right now. But you have to understand, and I, I really, I, I now get it. There is a sea of coins on decentralized exchanges, including more and more NFTs that are not included in that, well, once popular metric. So when you have these decentralized exchanges and platforms, and they're only increasing in an explosive manner, well, we will probably see new types of metrics emerge. But that dominance, yeah, that article is right. It's becoming less and less important. Okay, the second news that caught my curiosity, I'm just going to go really quickly on this. It's about this 39-year-old artist, Mike Winkleman. He's known as Beeple, and he does a variety of digital artwork, including short films, and he made this digital image 5,000 days in a row, a different, unique image for 5,000 days without missing a day. That is just really unbelievable. So the montage of images was put into an NTF, an NTF, an NFT, non-fungible token. And they did it by bringing it then on to Christie's, Christie's auction house. I mean, Sotheby's and Christie's are the two really premier auction houses in the world. And this piece sold for $69 million putting Beeple in a position of being among the top three most valuable living artists. So these tokens are often unique files that live on the blockchain and they are verifiable with the ownership and the owners have the right to resell them on the secondary market should they want to do that. And uh, yeah, what you're receiving is usually just a digital file. So the bidding 
it started at $100 on February 25th and it closed on Thursday. There were 33 active bidders. 91% were of the millennial and Gen X generation, mostly from America, followed by Europe and then Asia. And here is the presentation of the packaging. Very, very sharp. The unboxing of the high bidder uh, who is from LA is on Twitter. You can watch it. It's really, I, I enjoyed watching it. And you can go to the Christie's site and it has a super zoom that enables you a more detailed view of each individual image. Yeah, uh, this space is fascinating. Okay, let's get to the third story. And that is, uh, well, for me, it started with a Bloomberg article that was published. It told us that the SEC was seeking personal information from Ripple executives. That would be Chris Larson and Brad Garlinghouse. And they sent subpoenas to six banks asking for eight years worth of their banking information. So attorney James or he likes to be called Jim, so I'm sorry, Jim. Um, Jim Filan posted the individual defendant's letter that uh, was requesting a conference concerning their personal records, and the SEC is asking for personal devices as well. They want to search for documents and communication that's related. But you know, this isn't a fraud case, as the letter states. And no allegations of intermingled personal finances have been brought forth. So in the section two, personal financial lives are not relevant to this case. And this is really a sweeping fishing exhibition and it's used for the purpose of harassment. The letter is to the magistrate judge, which both parties agreed to uh, be able to handle the discovery disputes. So that's why you see a different judge name. Um, the, the documents that are on Twitter are a little hard, if not almost impossible to read because of the size of the text, but I brought all those documents up into Photoshop and I read them individually. And so I got a really good feel for what <laughs> Mr. Filan is saying here, and that is, uh, this is interesting. And this one, he says, this is going to be a steel cage death match. Check out footnote number one. So this next set of documents is uh, hmm, really hard hitting. It's accusing the Ripple team and, well, the attorneys of choosing to be invective, which means insulting, abusive, or using highly critical language. The SEC insists that they must have the financial bank records as well as iPhones and iPads in order to verify that they have all the information regarding sales of XRP, urging not to delay the inevitable search. And put the discovery in peril of meeting the schedule, the discovery schedule. Well, I can tell you that the last paragraph of the last page, the SEC goes on to say that they uh, do not agree to the withdrawal of the subpoenas. And uh, they're, they're clearly angry, <laughs> clearly. And they see that the individual defendants as taking the process hostage. Well, meanwhile, Flash FX is still using XRP for on-demand liquidity. That is ODL. And they were one of the first to announce that they were an ODL user. And they said that they are working on new corridors. And this was tweeted out on March 11th. So the use case still is prevailing in other parts of the world. All right. Yeah. Wow. Jumping to fluff in less than 10 minutes. There is a surprise baby monkey. <laughs> this is a gibbon, a white gibbon that was born in Sasebo, which is near Nagasaki. And the interesting thing is the mother who is living not with any males <laughs> 
had a baby. <laughs> they don't know how this happened. Uh, it's really funny. They're going to do paternity tests and she does have some male neighbors, but as far as they know, the gestation period is seven months. And as far as they can tell, there was no intermingling of, the, of uh, her name is Momo, same as uh, my one kitty. Momo is a popular name in Japan. It means peach. So Momo was never thought to have any any visitors or any company, but <laughs> has had this really cute little baby. I think this is a funny story. And then, like I have been highlighting uh, in our new norm of our world, there is just this reinvention of lots of services and businesses. And here we have another example. They're going to do cherry blossom viewing from a taxi service this year. This is a first. It's called Ohanami Taxi. Uh, Hanami is the cherry blossom viewing. It's called Hanami. And when you put an O in front of anything in Japanese, it's it turns it into a polite word. So it's like giving great respect to the cherry blossom. Ohanami. So Ohanami, you're going to get to bring up to six people in um, one of these taxis that were designed uh, after the taxis that are in London. It's a version that Toyota created and they did it for the Olympics. So at least <laughs> that's a good thing because the city is full of these taxis that were for the Olympics. And now it looks like that the Olympics are maybe going to happen for the athletes only. I don't know. It's really up in the air. But the um, six people, you can do a two hour plan for just around a hundred dollars. So, you know, two hours for a casual course, they call it with uh, that's a that's great. That's a really, really fun party, right? With everybody in one of those big uh, taxis or the vans. And then you can um, also choose from their three hour made to order course for a little bit more for about $149 for three hours. And that's where you make your own plan and you can arrange the departure point, the drop off point. You can go all through the 23 wards of Tokyo. I think this is great because there are a lot of big parks uh, that are not, they've, they've, you know, for, they are forbidding people to gather. So you can do some walking by riversides, but when it comes to the big parks, they are making it uh, quite impossible to uh, have the parties like people usually do, which is on the ground under the blossoms. It's been what tradition for more than a thousand years. So anyway, now we are having to enjoy it through the taxi rides. And tomorrow at 5 a.m. Whoa. <laughs> yeah. That's what happens when you live in Tokyo. I'm going to join uh, Darren Moore, Jungle Inc., uh, Mickey B. Fresh, and the it's being hosted by Deep Space Flare. And I think we're going to all talk about our experience thus far in the beta for the Flare Finance. And I really want to do a Flare Finance beta video that talks about the tips I think I learned so that maybe you don't spend as much time getting set up as I did. You know, I'm, I had MetaMask before, but I'm not a big MetaMask wallet user. So creating custom tokens on there and, and, connecting to Coston and also the Robs, Robston um, uh, platforms. Even it was all new. So you go through this huge learning curve, right? It's pretty steep. And I'm not going to kid you. Um, it's it takes it takes a little bit of um, brain power if you're not using this kind of technology every day. And then when you get into the actual flare farming, 
learning how to swap those coins through a wrap and how to stake them. Actually, the staking is not too hard. That part is not too hard. And I even today, I even claimed everything that had accumulated through the night because I'm, you know, kept in, I'm the the rewards are just coming in. It's like passive income while you're sleeping. And and I claimed those all and I learned from the video how to exit and then I got back in. So I really is starting to feel comfortable on the actual platform itself. I think it, that's easier than it was just getting set up, to be honest. But um, we're going to talk about it tomorrow. And then I will, uh, I had a lot of requests to do video, uh, do a video on it. So there's lots of really good videos out there, but I'm going to talk to the personal challenges that I encountered. And then I'll share that with you so that you don't, uh, you know, make that same mistake. Um, because yeah, it took me, I I'm not so fast. I'm, I'm not the sharpest knife in the drawer, but I never give up. That has always been, um that's always been the way i have uh made it through a lot of those challenges <laughs> is that i'm stubborn and i don't give up and it really feels good when you when you finally overcome those uh like oh gosh i'm stuck again you know what to do i don't know what to do so but um i did it and i just know that uh you're going to be able to do it too even if you have never worked with MetaMask and, and if you've never done any staking of tokens before, it, that part is not that hard. Now, there is, there is something that I wanna learn to do now in this and that's the arbitrage. I saw that the FTSO.EU group had just bingoed on so many tokens by doing the arbitrage. And so that is my next goal is to learn how to do that arbitrage. And that really, wow, what a, what a difference that makes in terms of how many rewards you can actually get a hold of. Yeah. All right, everybody, I better go let you go. Yeah. I got to be up in <laughs> less than, less than uh, 10 hours. Sayonara for now. Do take care. Bye-bye.